Hello Aquarius friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Aquarius July 2023 Astrology Horoscope Forecast. I'm calling the theme of this month for Aquarius, Five Magical Reasons for Aquarius to Love July. This is for you if Aquarius is your sun sign, your rising sign, your moon sign, or any other placement of Aquarius you're watching for. What we're going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. And for very late degree friends, so birthdays around February 15th through the rest of the sign, or Aquarius placements around 23 degrees through the rest of the sign, I suggest you additionally listen to my Pisces report. Since for you very late degree friends, you will have pieces in both the Aquarius and Pisces readings. A few general transit notes to discuss before we jump into our five magical reasons for Aquarius to love July. The first is that for the first time in many months, we have more salty aspects compared to sweet ones. This is nothing to fear, just like hearing that there might be a rainy day or a rainy week is nothing to fear. It's just something to know about so that you're prepared. So what there is to know about more salty aspects compared to sweet ones is that there are going to be road bumps. You're going to be like, ouch, oof, ah, throughout the month. And of course, there will be some blessing aspects as well, but the ratio will be off um, and you'll feel that. Okay, so again, these are nuisance aspects. They pass quickly, but it is something to know. And by the way, if you want to know more about the sweet and salty dates, the aspects of note, my favorite aspects of the month, the ones to be aware of and careful, careful especially for, definitely sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Um, and I do a written report one month early with all those details. All right, second general thing to know is that the eclipses, of course, are always in process because eclipse um, storylines last for years, but the heat of the eclipse season has passed. So we finally have a break from those April and May eclipse season energies, which were intense, bringing radical changes, definitely a lot of intensity. So now in July and August, we get a break to integrate those radical changes that were recently introduced. September will put us back into eclipse season. So, you know, it's coming, but for these couple of months, we can breathe easy and just sort of work with what becomes our new normal from the changes that may have come from that time. And if you want to have more insight into what eclipse cycles are at play and how they may be affecting you, because they're always working, they're just not heated up to a boil like they are in eclipse season, um, listen to my April and May reports and I'll outline for Aquarius what types of themes are present for these two eclipse cycles that are at play. Now the biggest influence this month is the Venus retrograde transit. Okay, and this is in effect from July 23rd through September 4th. That's the actual Venus retrograde with the pre-shadow transit starting June 19th and then the post-shadow transit stretching to October 6th. So it's a long, long transit and Venus rules love and beauty and money and design and our relationships and finances and all of those things. So a lot to know here. We're not going to cover all of that stuff in this um, video because there's so much to know, but I have tons of resources. So if you look in the notes below the podcast or video, you will see I will link um, videos and blogs that you can get educated on this transit so that you can make the most of it. There are so many things to know and Venus retrograde is one of my areas of special um, expertise. So you can check that out there. And also my book, Planetology, How to Align with the Natural Rhythms of the Universe, has a nice section on retrograde and a nice Venus retrograde checklist. The biggest thing to know here is that with all retrogrades, we have things go on from the past. So anything in those arenas can bring issues back from the past or magic and blessings from the past. There's an inward and backward focus, a short-term, lower stakes experimentation that goes on. And, um, you know, it's going to be retrograde in an element that is in a good connection with yours. So Venus retrograde here. It is going to be an opposition. All of these Leo placements are, and we'll get into that in a second, but it's still in an element that's harmonious for you. So air and fire blend together beautifully, and the whole Venus retrograde cycle of, you know, the end of June into the beginning of October, it will be in this zesty fire energy. And that 
can bring amazing things. Okay, so just a couple of other general transits to know about here um, and how they may affect you before we dive into our five magical reasons for Aquarius to love July. And incorporated in some of these other things I'm talking about, there are even more magical reasons. Um, but I had to stay organized to try to keep this a mini scope since we are in our travel season now and have a short time to record these. All right, so the next thing to know is that we've got a lot of Cancer energy. Also add to this... We've got on July 17th, a new moon at 25 degrees of Cancer. So we've got the new moon, Mercury, the sun, star goddess Juno, all congregating in Cancer, bringing glowing opportunities involving family and homes and housing and real estate. And these are convening for Aquarius in your house of health or your daily experience. It can add some softness and some sensitive connections to your daily experience, whether it's work or at home or the people you see every day. It can also add some emotion, for better or worse, into those relationships. This does make a little bit of an awkward angle with Aquarius placements, so there could be some things that come up. But in general, it brings lots of opportunities to resolve issues in these areas or to make positive change. This can also involve pets or animals. In general, this is a really great time to do things related to home or go back to a place that felt like home or reevaluate or revise or fix up things involving home or family or real estate investments. It's also a great time to cozy up with your family um, and to do fun things. That new moon in the days around July 17th is an especially great time to make your wishes, especially around your home and family desires. So if there are certain things you want to manifest in those arenas, perfect house, healing family dynamics, something like that, you've got a nice opportunity there to make your wishes be known to the universe and to plant seeds in the direction of your goals. Also in the days around July 3rd, we've got a full moon at almost or around 11 degrees of Capricorn. So fullness, completion, drama, fruition comes to something related to work or employment or, um, friendships because, sorry, it's not there in the 11th house, it's in the 12th house. So not friendships, but your inner space, your inner world, anything having to do with um, things that go on in private, which I guess could indirectly have something to do with friendships. It's like your quiet space, not in the public. And so something can come to fruition there. Some drama in a good way, some accomplishment. It could mean you get a new job or you get recognized at work or you have something important go on with your business. A lot of good energy to bring something up and out in the arena of work, employment, or a passion project. If you don't have work or employment as being relevant for you, this can have to do with passion projects or something to do with father figures, whether you as a father figure or whether it's your interactions with um, father figures. Okay, so now let's get to our five magical reasons for Aquarius to love July. Even though I've given you a bunch already that aren't included in that list, there were some specific things I wanted to mention, and they all have to do with fire energies, right? Fire energies work really well with that air energy that you have, as we mentioned. So let's talk about some opportunities that are brought up from these transits. First, we'll start with Leo. So we've got star goddess Lilith. In fire energy, in your house of relationships, you've got a congregation of energies in your seventh house of relationships. And by the way, if you do not like seeing the charts, I've got about split, about 50-50. Half of you out there have let me know you love seeing the charts. Half of you have said you don't like them. So that's why every other month I'm putting the charts up so we can keep everybody happy. Also, if you are one of the people who don't like the charts and it's in a month that the chart is happening, you can either scroll down on the screen on YouTube where you're hearing it but not seeing it, or I syndicate my horoscopes onto podcasts. So you can search for Astro Kisses with Annie Botticelli podcast and find me on Spotify and everywhere else if you just want to listen. Now, if you're on the podcast and you want the visuals, you can find the syndicated version. Just look for Aquarius July 2023 on my YouTube channel, Annie Botticelli. Okay, so now back to the visuals here. Seventh house is, so basically houses, all of these pie pieces that you see, these sections, all of these pie pieces are houses. They're fields of experience that we have as humans. And whenever we have a congregation of a bunch of energy in a field of experience, like Aquarius does at this time in the seventh house, 
it brings all of these different levels. Every placement is a level. You can imagine it, I like to imagine it, as all of those planets are people at a party. Okay, so there's a congregation and everyone with their different quirky nature, the different things they're interested in, the different things they focus on, are all coming to this party in your seventh house of relationships. And that's your personal ones, your business ones, your romantic ones, your business, like um, customer relations. It could be your neighbors. It could be your how you relate to relationships. It could be anyone, your plumber or your kid's teacher or just anyone of a, you know, of a, of a relation that you have a relationship of any kind, someone that does something to help you or something that you do to help other people. All of those people are here and you can see there's a giant party. Okay. And then we look to the sign to see the mood of the party. The mood is Leo. The mood is festive. It's theatrical. It's, you know, lively. It's fiery. It's up for fun. So this is, this is a gathering of fun. It can also be a gathering of finding positive solutions because with all of these things opposing your placements, it can feel like you're being pulled in two different directions. Like you have needs and the people in your life have needs or you need help and now you have to get everyone who's going to help you up to speed. There's some element of being pulled in, in two different directions here, but that doesn't have to be a bad thing. That can be the magical equation that helps you to feel like you have all the balls in the air and everything's getting done. And that's a really good feeling. Okay. So you've got this festive mood in the house of partnerships, looking for solutions, um, looking to have fun, looking for, um, fiery, sparkling outcomes and creative expression. We've got Lilith here who specifically wants you to heal hurts. Okay, so if you've got something that was a problem in the past, the combination of having Lilith around here in Leo and also Venus being retrograde in Leo and also Venus being in your seventh house shows us multiple layers of magical reasons for you to love July because you can resolve some long-standing problems in your love life or with your relationship space or with your self-esteem and your confidence in yourself. So that is the first reason. The second reason is, let's talk about Venus a little deeper. The chance for blessings to come from the past, comfort, things you love, fun to come from the past are all accentuated. That's the second magical reason to love July. We're going to skip this one here because that placement moves very quickly and it's not going to be relevant for the rest of the month. So we won't even look at that. But Mars has a little longer in Leo. Mars looks for solutions. Wherever Mars is, that's where your focus is. I, I always call it the border collie of the zodiac. So Mars is getting you obsessed with getting things sorted out in your relationships. It will move on into Virgo and be looking for solutions regarding your financial resources and your shared business connections as well this month. And those are also all magical reasons because if you've got something with love or money that needs to be worked out, You've got the retrograde, you've got all of these lines of energy, you've got Mars in these two different spaces that are seeking to do this. Also with Mars in Leo, it can help you improve your vitality and help you locate reasons why you are not having vitality. And this combined with this energy in the sixth house, which is the house of health, can bring to your awareness things that have been going on that have been interfering with that vitality and help you find solutions. Okay, so that's the third magical reason. Fourth magical reason is star goddess Pallas Athena. We don't hear about Pallas Athena very often. And the story as to why Athena became Pallas Athena and the whole storyline, I'm not going to get into that. It's a pretty cool story, but maybe another time. But what we need to know is that she is a passion warrior. All right. So in mythology, Athena is the sister of Eris. Okay, Eris is that chaotic, destructive energy of war and fighting for the sake of itself. But the sister here, Pallas Athena, she is more of a strategist, a calm warrior, fighting only when necessary and fighting battles on a bigger level. One of my favorite things about Pallas Athena, this is something that really isn't talked about very much, has to do with her connection to industry. There are lots of stories about how 
she created industry for special groups of people, um, for uh, overall population. And she had to do with this energy of creation of a product for the purpose of industry to serve the person making the product and to serve the people who um, is getting are getting the product. So this is like a zesty, strategic, passionate, um, passion economy based uh, warrior goddess. And who doesn't love to have that, especially in, you know, a nice element for your placement. So you're going to find that energy is really accentuated in your seventh house. Seventh house things can be the people that you're interacting with too. So you can pull in people like that, that can be an inspiration for you, or you can be holding that energy of Pallas Athena with other people. Even though she's overall pretty calm and, you know, focuses on the strategy, there were a few times she turned people that annoyed her into various things. <laughs> and so there's a lesson with her to um, use your power wisely, because there will be a tremendous amount of inspiration and energy and influence that you can have, and using that wisely will bring the best karmic outcomes. So that's the number four magical reason for Aquarius to love July, and the fifth one is here. Chiron and Aries. This has been going on for a while, but I'm going to bring it back around to talk about now because, again, it's making a nice angle for you. It's making the angle of opportunity. Opportunities can be worth nothing if you don't activate them, and that's the important thing to know. You have opportunities to improve your communication and to improve all of your relationships by communicating more clearly the things that you want and hearing more deeply the things that other people want. And then using all this seventh house energy that I talked about to find common ground and solutions. So fifth magical reason, very, very exciting. Definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. That is the interface for all the free goodies I make for you each month. I have all kinds of things written, horoscopes. Um, you can get my 28 day virtual coaching program called Shine to help kickstart your spiritual um, journey or expand it if you've been on it for a while and also help your health and wellness. Um, if you want to learn astrology, to be a professional astrologer and earn money from your love of the stars or just dive deeper in astrology because you love the process and you love the study and you love how I teach and you want to learn for yourself and your family and friends, you can go to loomlife.com, L-U-M-E, life.com. You can see my Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery course there. And there are also some free courses on manifesting money and wellness. If you want to go deeper into more content from me, my secret star portal, including my very detailed Saturn in Pisces video, you can, or audio rather, report, you can go to AnnieBAstrology.com, Annie, the letter B, astrology.com. I also have all of the Jupiter through the signs, um, whatever the current sign is, we're about to, we're having a switch in the in the period of time that I'm recording this. Um, learning about your natal chart, you can find it there, AnnieBAstrology.com, and these links are in the notes underneath the podcast or um, video. And also in those notes, you can find my Venus retrograde links. So it's a good idea to get up on what's happening in Venus retrograde and look out for my shorts series on my YouTube channel starting in July. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.